The carp are stretched on dishes like soldiers in full dress on parade. Before we taste these delicacies, let's think where all the fish here come from. Where did they live before they became these tasty dishes in Jewish style, Zator style, or in jelly? Oh, this one for example. Where do carp come from? It is much more complicated than explaining where babies come from. Stories about storks or cabbage are not useful in this case. It all started one sultry morning in May several months ago. Our carp's mother and father were caught in neighboring ponds. Their pedigrees have been recorded for decades. They come from a noble line of Zator carp. They are mirror carp with olive blue skin. Spawners should be handled carefully. They are delicate and prone to different kinds of internal injuries. You fish them with landing nets, then take them out of a pond on a tarpaulin stretcher and put them into special transporting tanks. Additionally, the water is oxygenated. It is also necessary to check if the fish are ready for spawning. These marks are like IDs. All carp look alike, but now we know which is which. Can a scythe come in useful in carp breeding? It turns out that it can. It is essential for preparing natural spawning grounds. These are shallow ponds 70 centimeters deep. They are filled with water just before the fish are placed in them. First, you need to scythe the grass and seal the monks thoroughly. Now, when everything is ready, the fish are placed in the ponds. A set of two females and three males in each. Now they will be watched day and night. They need peace and quiet, yet at the same time, the pond workers watch the process of spawning. It is important to control the inflow of water in order to keep it steady level.
Spawning usually takes place early in the morning or in the evening. Due to its glutinous envelope, spawn can stick to plants in water and grow up at some distance from the bottom. This provides better oxygen conditions. The embryonal development of the carp lasts three to six days depending on the temperature of water. Newly hatched larvae stick to plants and feed on the contents of the yolk sac at the beginning. On the second and third day after hatching, they start swimming and feed on plankton. The size of the yolk sac, which should be absorbed by two-thirds, determines if the hatch is useful for catching. For catching the fish, use special landing nets trimmed with milled gauze. During the catch, a tub is filled with water from a pond so that a container can float freely. Then, slowly, you gather the hatch and quickly carry it to the tub. The catch should start late in the morning on a sunny day as the hatch floats out of the grass towards the spawning ground. Now you need to count the small fish you have caught. For transport, double polyethylene bags filled with oxygen are used. Small carp are going to be transported to other ponds where they will mature. Oh, here is our small carp, third from the left, in the top corner of the screen. At present, it has no idea that in several months it will become a star at some feast. The method of transporting carp at successive stages of their development to specially prepared ponds was created right here in the upper Vistula River Valley. The master fisher, Tomasz Dubis, was given a diploma from the Vienna Fisheries Association in the 19th century for creating the method. It is hardly surprising, since this new method allowed to fish mature carp over three years of breeding only, not six as in the old method. However, fish pond husbandry has its origin in much earlier times. 
Chronicles say that in 1191, Mieszko, the son of Bolesław the Rymouth, consented to build three water mills on the Skava River, consented to renovate the lake silted by the Wisla River in Bachowice, and to start fish breeding there. It is said that some of the ponds were dug up by Tartar prisoners. The first ponds were created next to monasteries doing farming. One of the first orders to start carp breeding was a Cistercian order who came to Poland in the 12th century. Also, the Dominicans, the Benedictines, and the Templars had their own ponds. These orders have influenced fish pond husbandry to a high degree, and even today you can notice it in the terminology. The culverts controlling water flow are called monks, supposedly because the monks used to sit on them to watch the pond in order not to miss the moment when spawning began. The hatch caught in spawning grounds is transported to the first nursery ponds. These are ponds where summer fry of the carp is bred. They need excellent feeding conditions to make young fish grow fast. The bottom has been fertilized with manure. The nursery ponds are usually filled with water when carp spawn on spawning grounds. This leaves enough time for protozoans and rotifers to develop, which are food for the hatch in its early days. Later, the hatch needs bigger forms of zooplankton. Water used to fill nursery ponds should be filtered through thick nets to stop predatory fish and food competitors of the carp from getting in. There are about 200,000 small carp swimming in every hectare of the pond. The first nursery ponds are almost one meter deep. The maximum water level is kept for the first two weeks. During the third and fourth weeks, the flow is shut off to lower the depth naturally. Owing to this, young carp have better access to delicacies floating at the bottom. The increase of the hatch varies in this period depending on the fish population and the quantity of food in the pond. For this reason, control catches should be carried out every week. Six weeks have passed. The small carp are fished out again. Water should be released slowly through a thick sieve to stop the fry from floating out. The small fish get into grooves together with water. Now, a thick grating is being put in here to prevent them from getting out. And yet again, arduous calculations and measurements. The average weight of the fry is calculated by weighing 500 randomly chosen fish in water. To eliminate miscount, the action is repeated several times. When we know the average amount of fish in a measure and quantity of measures, we can estimate the size of a catch. Now the fish are being packed into polyethylene bags with oxygen or special oxygenated tubs. They are going to be transferred to fry ponds in a while. And this is our hero. It has grown a lot in a month. Now the fish will be fed systematically, definitely not poorly. In the Zator ponds, only health food from local farmers is served. The menu includes finely ground wheat, rye, or corn. Later, when the fish grow up, it is not necessary to grind the feed so finely. Feeding takes place three times a week until the end of September. <laughs>